Hey everyone, what's up? It's Top of the Mac here. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a recap of WWDC 2011. Uh, now, there's probably going to be different parts for this video. Uh, so the first part of the video is going to be about iCloud, and the second part is going to be on iOS 5, and the third part will be on macOS sets. Um, now, macOS sets it now. Before I get into the features of it, I want to let you know that Mac OS X Lion is going to be available in July from the Mac App Store for $29.99, $30. iOS 5 has over 200 new features for the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPad Touch. And their biggest thing they announced is iCloud, which stores all your content on the server, and you can instantly get it on your Mac, PC, iPad Touch, iPhone, and iPad. Uh, everything happens automatically so um, I'm just going to be getting into iCloud and um, iCloud stores as I said all your content so your music photos apps calendars documents and wirelessly puts them to all your devices automatically instantly and you don't have to do anything and when you sign up for iCloud, it gives you 5 gigabytes of free space, and that's a lot of space that Apple is giving us for our iCloud. And they said that your purchase music apps and books, photos, don't count against your free storage. So your mail documents, camera roll, account information, settings, and other app data goes in that iCloud. And that, and that alone doesn't take up that much space unless you get a lot of email. So, um... The five gigabytes should come in, in handy. So as I said before, the content uh, goes on all your devices, not just your mobile devices, but also your Mac and PC. Um, now this is going to be available this fall, so uh, you can press the little blue button over here, notify them, and type in your email, and you should get an email when it's available. So sometime in September or October, somewhere around the fall, this stuff will be available before I get into the other things. And as I said, with the content, there's no syncing required, there's no management required, it does everything for you. And uh, the apps you use every day are ready for iCloud, so first I'm going to be getting into iTunes in the cloud. And what it does, there are a few beta, um, there are a few beta features available now. So, such as when you purchase the music in iTunes, it automatically appears on all your devices, and you can download all your past iTunes purchases um, on your Mac, PC, iPhone, iPod, etc., or iPad. So, the beta features that are available now, such as new purchase automatically everywhere, so say if you purchase a song, it will be available on all your devices, and all you have to do is if it recognizes it that you downloaded it, there'll be a little cloud button right there. And you press the cloud button, and it'll automatically download that album or song that you purchased. And now there's also iTunes Match, which is not a, which is not a beta feature, and coming this fall. And for just twenty five dollars, it it, it, it pretty much um, determines which songs in your collection are from the iTunes store. And um, uh, any music with a match is automatically downloaded to all your devices. So um, there's over 18 million songs in the iTunes store, so um, all your songs should pretty much find a match with iTunes. Uh, if they don't, you'll just have to upload them um, automatically to uh, iCloud. And also, if it determines a match with iTunes, it will play back at 256 kilobytes per second. Which is, even if your original copy of the song was of lower quality, so this means rip the rip CDs, um, if you purchased it from Amazon MP3 or something like that, um, it'll automatically uh, play at a better uh, quality speed per second. And so here are pretty much um, iCloud compared to all these other services. So they compare it to Amazon and Google, but I'm not going to get into that. So next, there's PhotoStream, which is the same thing. If you take a photo on one device, it'll automatically sync with all your devices. 
and so you have a master photo library on your Mac and PC and it allows you to get a complete set of uh, photos on your Mac or PC and it automatically syncs with all your devices on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch and um, you can also uh, make your photos stream to Apple TV as well uh, so there's nothing really new to that a photo stream just streams all your um, uh, photos to all your devices and then also for apps, books, documents, and backup there is a new feature called backup and it backs up uh, every uh, thing of important stuff on your iOS device. So it backs up your music apps, books, photos and video, and your camera roll, your device settings, your app data, your home screen and app organization, your text and MMS messages, and your ringtones. So um, it, it only backs up the stuff that you changed, and it's convenient and it's effortless. Now it also just doesn't back up the stuff that you changed, I'm sorry, it backs up everything. And all you have to do is connect your device to Wi-Fi and enter your Apple ID and password and everything will start uh, backing up automatically. And yep, so that's pretty cool. Um, it also syncs all your contacts, calendar, mail. Uh, so pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it for iCloud. Pretty much it syncs everything, stores all your content, and puts it on all your devices. So, uh, the only big things were, uh, the iTunes, the, the, uh, iTunes, uh, in the cloud, and, uh, the five gigabytes of storage, and the new backup feature, which will back up all your, uh, content on your devices, and, uh, you can automatically have it, so that's pretty cool, guys. Uh, so thanks for watching part one of the three-part series of the WWDC 2011 recap. Uh, my next video is going to be on iOS 5, so stay tuned to the channel for more coverage of WWDC 2011. Thanks for watching, everyone.